Tonight, the Terriers, the first of two. Bernie Corbett, Mark Linehan, as they welcome the Sun Devils of Arizona State for a non-conference series. Maneuver to his partner here, Campolito. Campolito, a rink with pass. Phillips through the middle, Amonti. Amonti to Amonti. His brother, almost, that's yeah. right. Almost a little Amonti to Amonti. Phillips now keeps it in down low. Back yeah, hand to goal. Amonti to Amonti. Amonti. <laughs> Ty Amonti from Phillips. And the Terriers have a one to nothing lead. That was a backhand that Johnny Pearson would have been proud of. Master Simone over the blue for Scoop. Scoop now closes for a shot. Gloved down by Brady, but uh, laying lonely for a moment. Master Simone gets it back. Looks for Gallagher. Oh. This is a goal. Gallagher from the far circle. And the Terriers take a two to nothing lead. Theo Chartis up ahead. Gets it back. Oh, nice and got stripped. Now here's Master Simone. Master Simone closing in front of the goal. To the backhand. And the Terriers have a three to nothing lead. Well, it started out by him reading the play perfectly, what the defenseman wanted to do. Stole the puck, started to go in, slowed down a little, looking for the weak side wing, and I think he got Brady thinking the same way. Absolutely. Cut across to the back end right here. We watch it. Sold the defenseman. You're exactly right, Bernie. Watch this little hesitation move. Goes forehand, backhand, bang, goal. Going to jailbreak now with the Sun Devils. Back up over the line. Come on, Z. Got a man trailing, Copper with a shot and a goal. Redirected, look down yeah. low off the original shot by Copper And the Sun Devils are on the board. Slow down effectively by Tuck. Now Doogie handed it away, go. and now O'Brien looking to beat the defense. O'Brien is in. O'Brien to the back, hand and a goal! Jay O'Brien restores the Terrier three goal lead with 8.26 left. Trying to position himself. Buck squirts free. Covered by Peterson. Peterson will stop. And Peterson will find the empty net. There you go. Brown here on the power play. That's when you were glad you had a guy, right? Brian, yeah. <laughs> Saved by Brady wow. and a goal. Brown on the follow-up. Right on the doorstep. And uh, the Terriers are rolling now. It is six to one. Great to see Matt Brown get one. Riley tried to make a pass deep. That was denied by the Terriers. Armstrong now with under two. And sorry, drop from Armstrong and a goal. Seven to one Terriers as Armstrong snaps a wrist to low and by Brady. There with time running out in the contest as the Terriers of Boston University welcome back, boys. Skate away to a decisive seven to one victory to begin the new year here at Aganis Arena. Well, it was nice to score a lot of goals. Um, I think we had seven different scorers. We kind of broke out towards the end in that third. The goal that O'Brien scored was was definitely a, a bit of a backbreaker for them. Uh, and then we just kept playing. But from the drop of the puck in the first shift, uh, we were there. You know, so we started on time, which is important. Um, and we had some physicality. I think Tuck and, and Vlas had two big hits in that first shift. So it kind of set the tone for the game. I thought our four check was really good. I thought our breakouts were good. Our neutral zone play was pretty good. Um, power play was good. You know, I think it was about as thorough as we've played all year. And, you know, it's it's exciting. It was last week, you know, playing with the 15 skaters gave gave the guys some confidence and um, showed uh, showed the group kind of, if you play the right way, uh, good things can happen. I thought we played for about 56 minutes the right way. You know, the first start of that third period was a little bit. Guys thought it was going to be point night a little bit. Um, and then they end up going down and scoring, and then we kind of responded right away. So really, really tough to play with 5D for that extended period of time. I thought the D were terrific. I thought Vlas was playing really well until he got bounced. Cade Weber was probably the best game of his career. I thought Mastro was the best game of the season. Um, Tristan Amonte had a big goal. He had a, some contributions uh, for some freshmen and you know some upperclassmen and some leaders. So all in all, Great effort, and that's that's a really good hockey team on the other side, and we we that we played about as good as we have all year. So um, I think that was that was the reason we it ended up got, kind of got away at the end. I don't know if it was a seven-one game, um, but that's a good hockey team that that we we had to play really well to to put ourselves in a spot to win. Yeah, I don't know if he was more excited than Ty was, but I think they both, uh, the Amantes like to celebrate when they score, so. Um, and they normally score some big ones. You know, it was nice to 
nice to get on the board for him. Um, that'll give him some confidence because he was in and around it all, you know, in that first period there. He could have had a couple other ones. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was really good to see. I was I was happy for him in that line. That line played really well. Well, obviously Logan wasn't there, uh, our captain. Uh, Steve-O didn't play up front either, uh, and Bogo didn't play. So, um, you know, we tinkered a little bit. You know, obviously we put Brownie with, you know, Mastro and, and PD. That was the first time we kind of put, you know, pretty good offensive group together. Uh, and then the, the Kaufman, um, O'Brien, Tuck line was pretty good at Brown. So we just kept that together, and then we kind of mixed and matched some of the other lines. But I think... At Northern Michigan, we had Tristan, Ty, and and uh, and Philly, and they were on the ice for a goal. They actually played a really good game together. So, I think uh, it's going to be tough tomorrow with uh, maybe trying to add or platoon a guy in there. So, um, you know, it worked. You know, they had some chemistry, and we were good off the rush. Uh, I think a lot of that had to do uh, with our D and our breakouts. You know, we're pretty clean out of the zone. We did a really good job of of not only breaking it out but transitioning off of. of of D zone. We scored the goal because Luke Tuck blocks the shot. Our commitment to defense was about as good as it's been all year. Block shots, playing hard at our net, and then we had, we were on the attack. When we were on offense, we were going to the net. Uh, we were driving the net. We were taking pucks to the net. And we were we were attacking by shots too. So all four lines did it, and um, and the D were a big part of that too. Oh, you just, you just played like a man. You know, there were, there were times where he was indecisive in his play, but he was very decisive in what he was doing. Going back on pucks, probably the best he's gone back on pucks and, and making plays. He was good at the offensive bull. He almost scored that one goal. Um, and then he was just hard. Like, he just played hard. He played simple, played smart. Um, he blocked. He, was, he ate a lot of pucks. I think he had six block shots on the night. Um, he just really played a man's game. So it was, it was great to see. It's great to see him kind of stringing some games together. It seems like he's growing some confidence and understanding what he is. I thought he was, I thought he was really sharp. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's shocking um, because he was awful in practice yesterday. <laughs> it was probably the worst practice of his of his career, so it was kind of going in, like being like, "How is Philly going to be?" He hasn't played in a while, like complete 180. He was, I thought he was dynamite tonight. It was really quick, and probably could have had a couple more points, a couple more goals. Um, but yeah, he was a major factor uh, for that line. I think guys are excited to play. They really, uh, um, it's a tight group. I think now that we have everyone back, I think guys are pretty confident. Um, I don't want to say we have swagger as a group, but we've got a good level of confidence right now, especially starting the semester with a win and then putting another one together. And um, it's important that we have the right mindset going in tom tomorrow because, you know, we're, we're facing a pretty good foe. So um, human nature would be to let up a little and think it's going to be easy because we scored seven. Um, but there was a lot of hard work. Uh, and our commitment to winning was high, so we're going to have to need that again to uh, to win. I think we played them out there a couple of years ago um, at Arizona. We beat them seven nothing the first night. Next night was a was an absolute war, um, and they they've had some of those results over the last few years. Um, so we're going to have to make sure if they lost the game, usually the next night they win because um, they get they get a veteran team and a coach that can. Camped up and prepped to play. Uh, I thought he was poised in there. I thought his puck handling was very good. I think um, there was a couple misplays, um, but on balance, he was really good at breaking the puck out. He was a big part of our breakout. Um, in the first, he didn't have to make a ton. He had to make a couple key ones. Second, he had a lot more work. Um, they had a two-on-one that he made a save on. And he, he made a play in the power play where um, they kind of seemed us, you know, from basically the top right, basically to the dot. And he came across, he read it, made it look easy, but it was a really high-level save. Uh, and that was kind of a game-changing save. Um, 
He was good, really good, really solid. I'm happy for him. I think we could have scored a lot more when we played BC uh, before break. You know, I think our rushes have been a lot better. Um, I think I think we were playing really well. We just weren't finishing. Um, I think at one point we were 0 for 8 on breakaways, um, and we obviously scored a breakaway goal tonight. Master had a two on one. We're scoring more off the rush, um, which it, it's not that we didn't have the chances. We just weren't finishing, and now guys are making plays. And the right guys are having those pucks in those areas too. So it's, yeah, I'm just happy for the confidence of the group. Take one more if you have it. Um, you were uh, uh, pretty far apart, but you think scored the most opportunities. So what changed there? Uh, well, we we drove the net. The first one was a uh, was off a rush. Uh, we drove the net. Um, Skoog held on to it. We we had a really good breakout kick out. And Skoog, instead of just kind of like throwing one in, he had a high level of poise. He, he attacked, and the guys went to the net. We had a shot. We played off a recover. Uh, and Galley has a pretty kind of a sixth sense of shooting the puck. Uh, it was an absolute snipe. Uh, and then the next one was just it was good play. You know, it was a good play by Brownie. He dropped it off to Luke. Luke, Luke released one. It was just basically low play um, out to the weak side, up and around. And then a little slide pass on the backhand. You know, they were working on it, on that basically working the back side of the net and changing sides yesterday, because our power play was terrible in practice yesterday. So after <laughs> afterwards, Jay was working, I was working, uh, Lenny was working on trying to try to you know build some confidence within it, because the, the the two days prior the power play was pretty good. It's never always going to be perfect, but um, it was good to see uh, guys execute it. You know, that's what it comes down to: execution, shooting the puck. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.